This would be Thursday, March 17th. Happy International Green Day. Um, not the band, the color. Uh, so you can't money is due tomorrow. Talent show today after school. Tomorrow we'll be talking about how awesome the talent show was. And see, the Heroes t-shirt we ordered due also Friday. We have homework. Choo. This is for the advanced class. So you can download all that stuff. If you're in the regular class, you get to celebrate the fact that you're not advanced. Um, the, for everyone, we have mythology, the regular homeworks on the regular page, the advanced homework on the advanced page. We're both going to do the Phaethon and the Arachne because it's going to give the same information. Then we're going to finish out our, the blue sheets. I think we got to this point. Did we get to this far yesterday, you guys? Yeah. Yay, because who was the god of sworn oaths? Six. Six. Sticks. What new form does she take? Winter. What happens if a human breaks their promise on sticks? They die. And if a god breaks their promise? A human. They they're coming human, human for ten years. Worst possible punishment. It's going to show up in our story today. Can they die as a human? Uh, they could. That's what made it so scary. Uh, and um, oh. the face. Our first one is Clotho. Pulls out the string. She pulls what out job does she have? Pulls the string. Or creates the string, depending on if she both made or pulls the string. And we get a word from Clotho, god of strings. Oh, cloth. Nice mm. Cloth, because Thanks. cloth is made of? String connections. This is the same idea. The second god, second fate is Jesus. And her job is to cut measure the measuring. 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 Yes, you should always cut before you measure. It's good thing. <laughs> and the last one is Atropus. Atropus is close. And what is it? Atropus cut. does. She is the official cutter of the string. Life ender. So wait, how does this all work again? Yes, go back and watch that video. Then we're going to get to how the whole world looks. And the oh. world was not a ball because that's ridiculous. We know how's it shaped? Flat. 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 Flat like a dinner plate with toast on it because toast is delicious. Then we're going to have two gigantic crumbs or lumps of mashed potatoes. Actually, there were several lumps. We had a whole bunch of mountains. Um, but on one of those mountains was the sky. And what does the sky look like? A bowl. It is a bowl. Not a bowl, but a bowl bowl on top of one of those mountains. And between the bowl and the mountain is a god. And what god is between those? Atlas. Nicely done. Atlas holding up the whole thing. And in the middle of all this is a giant body of water. If we were to turn our plate so you could see it face down, so from here we're going to turn it, dooka, 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 it would look like a gigantic donut. Where you'd have land that goes all the way around, and then in the middle of it, where the hole would be, there was this body of water. And the land that goes around it, that connects, you have Spain, Italy, Greece, Turkey, Northern Africa, and it would connect and make this big circle that goes, goes in a circle. In the middle of it, body of water. Body of water has a name that you should know from social studies. Ocean. That is correct. Yes, ocean or Mediterranean Sea. Those are definitely synonyms. It was called the Mediterranean Sea. There's a reason why it's called Mediterranean Sea. Oh, it's in the middle. Mediterranean breaks down into two Latin roots, Medi and Terran. Medi means? Middle. Terran is? Ocean. So the Mediterranean, the land in the middle, so the land, water in the middle of all the land. So they called it the Mediterranean. And even though we know that's not how it is today, that's still what they called it, so it stuck around. So they thought that was the middle of everything. And then later on, they figured out, oh, there's other worlds out there. There are a few other questions I want to hit, just because I know they get confusing at times, so to help you. Um, this goes back to when uh, Persephone got kidnapped, and Apollo saw it happen, and Apollo realized oh. that she does not want to be kidnapped with the kicking and the screaming and the bag over the head. And Apollo, being a nice person, still does not get involved. Why would he not stop Hades from doing such a horrible thing, Birdie? He had to, Hades had to take permission. And so if he stops him, who's he going against? Zeus. So he would not want to go against Zeus. So the whole idea there being he does not want to go against Zeus and get himself beat up and in trouble because that would be bad. Prometheus teaches humans how to do two things. And what two things does he teach humans how to do? Levi? Um, make fire with the shiggity shiggity boy yes. scout. And? and then also how to split up the cow. Works for me. Sacrifices and fire. Of those two, Zeus does not want humans to have fire for two reasons. 
Why does he not want humans to have fire? Michael? Um, there was a prophecy that said the world would go up in flames. That was one half of it. The fact that that will show up in today's story with the prophecy of the world ending in flame. And Hess? Humans could hurt Zeus. And the fact that they could stab him in the toes, and that made him grumpy. So it was a little bit of both. A little bit of A, a little bit of B. A little bit of question 57. This goes back to Prometheus. When Prometheus was uh, fighting in the war, and he was on Kronos' side, and he was fighting against Zeus, he used his special power. And what's his special power? To see the future. See the future. And he looked down the line, and he saw that any god that was fighting with Kronos and lost the war, what happens to those gods? They go in Tartarus. Pit of Tartarus. But if he switches sides and goes to Zeus's side, looks down the line far enough, he sees that he still gets tortured. And how does he get tortured on this side? Oh. Yeah. By helping mankind. That's not a torture. Eagle pecked out, run over by Apollo. Is, is correct. Yeah, it's um. not written down there. This is actually using the thinker. And so he gets chained oh. to a mountain. Yeah. Got to okay, listen okay, to the okay. Question. And the torturing is going to happen to him. So yeah. the idea becomes why bother switching sides and come over to here? What does he get to do that makes this the better choice, knowing that in his heart he's a good person and wants to be all helpful like me? Cover? To help mankind. And how does he help mankind? Mm -hmm. And he realizes that if he does not switch sides, no one will be there to help them with the fire and the sacrifices, and they'll be on their own. And he says, you know what? Both end in torture, but at least on one side, I get to help humans and make their life a little bit better. So he does it because he's a good person, like me. Good job. So with that, uh, that's it. You now have had every answer on the blue sheet we have covered so far with this unit. At this point, your job is to not lose the blue sheet so that I can give you lots of points when I grade it uh, in two weeks from today. If there are any blanks you have on there, you're always welcome to ask. Uh, I won't give you the answer, but I will tell you how to find them in your own brain. Yes? What's 37? I don't know. What's 37? I don't know. Memorize. Oh, it's in your brain. Todd. Yeah, they are on the website, too. Which you can also go to, but that doesn't give you the explanations for them. It doesn't help you out. It doesn't matter. It's on the blue sheet. That's true. But as we just found out a moment ago, sometimes actually understanding what's written there is better than just repeating the answers that's written there. When it comes time for the test, I'm not going to just give you the answer straight off there. Those are just to help remind you of the stories. Then you can put the blue sheet away, and the iPad away, and the notebook away, unless you're still working on the blue sheet. If you're still writing down the answers from the brain, then that's fine. With you. Now we're going to deal with what happens when you don't listen to your parents. Wait, okay, it's Faithin. Faithin? Huh? Faithin. Faithin. Is Faithin different from Pantheon? Pantheon? Pan Par Parthenon? The building? Like the Parthenon's a building. Faithin yeah. is a kid. Faith? Okay. They are different. Although they do have similar letters in them. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. In order to understand the story of Faithin, we have to figure out what happens with Apollo and how Apollo's job works. With Apollo's journey each day, what was Apollo's job? To drive the sun across. Drive the sun chariot. And the way it worked out is there were multiple mountains, but as far as his job is concerned, there were two mountains. One on the east side of the world and one on the west side of the world. And what he would do is take off from the one on the east where he had a palace, and he would fly all the way across to the other side. And it would take him all day to get from one side to the other. And why would it take him all day? Because that's how long the day is. Yeah, because that's how long the day is, because he was the sun. And as he went across, you would either see the burning wheels of the chariot, or the burning hooves of the horses, or the burning hat of the hat, or something that was on fire, because that's where the sun comes in. And as he went across the other side, he would have monsters that were in the sky that he had to avoid fighting, or sometimes fight them if need be. There was a crab and a scorpion, and a bull, and two fish, and a centaur, and an archer, and these things that he had to fight as he went across are? Constellations. The constellations. And so those were thought to be actual monsters that were up there that he had to dodge and fight as he went across. Then, in the evening, he would land on this far mountain. Once he landed here, he'd get a chance to rest, and he would take his chariot down to the bottom of the mountain, and at the bottom of the mountain, there was a big body of water in the middle of the world called? Mediterranean. Good job not just calling it the ocean. And then you'd go from there onto a boat, 
get on the boat and take the boat from one side of the Mediterranean to the other while he took a nap. Until sometime in the middle of the night, he would get to this side, and then he would go up and start the whole thing all over again. Problem is, this was exhausting and took up all of his time. He barely ever got any days off. Oh, Mr. Boviak, he got no days off because the sun was always out. True, but oftentimes you'd see it being all cloudy, and that was them thinking that he had taken a day off, but that's not very often. So, the fact that he had to work all the time, and it was exhausting. Oh, by the way, because this question comes up. Mr. Boviak, why not just build a palace over there? And then he could sleep and have a whole lot more free time. Good question. Why can't he just build a palace there, and then just go the opposite direction that's the next where day? That's Atlas is at. No, but a good guess. Ella? Because the sun has to come up again, and you can't go from this side. Sun only goes in one direction. Monday, Tuesday. So you don't go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Although it'd be fun, that's not the way it works. So they had to find an explanation that works. So obviously, he took a boat across. And eventually, he gets tired of this and not having any free time, because when you're that good looking, you want to have free time to hang with the ladies. So he decides to retire, and he steps down as the god of the sun and has another guy step up as the new god of the sun. And stepping down. Oh, and the new guy that steps up, sorry, I didn't mean, the new guy that steps up is? Helios. I didn't mean to make it up here. Is Helios. And so Apollo goes into a management position. He still gets to be called the god of the sun, but now he gets to focus on music and the ladies and his hair whipping in the wind and stuff like that. And it becomes Helios' job to actually drive the sun chariot. And so Helios becomes the new sun god. And for today's story, we're going to take a look at a kid by the name of Phaethon. Phaethon grew up just him and his mom. And with it growing up, just him and his mom, he would oftentimes ask his mom, Mommy, who's my father? And she would take him outside, put her arm around his shoulder, and point up at the sky and go, that's your father, right up there. He'd go, the sun? The sun is my daddy? She goes, you are the son of the sun. And so he grew up hearing the fact that the sun god was his father. And the years would go by, and he would tell the kids at school, whenever they would ask, he would say, that's my daddy, my daddy is the sun god. And like any kids at school, when they found out such information, they were horrible, big, fat jerks, and they would make fun of him. And they teased him, and taunted him, and made him cry. Until one day, when he turned 16, he got tired of all the taunting at school, and he decided to solve all of this by going and finding Helios and confronting Helios and finding out if Helios truly was his father. So Phaethon takes off on an adventure, seeks throughout the world until he can find the mountain that Helios has his palace on top of, finds that mountain, climbs up to the top of it, gets to the top of the mountain sometime early in the morning before dawn has started. When he gets to the top of the mountain, finds these gigantic doors, walks up, throws open the gigantic doors, and storms inside and says, I am here to see Helios, and I am ah, my eyeballs. And he covers his eyes and turns away because there's a brilliant bright light shining at him, and he fears he made a poor choice, and he's seen a God that's true form, and he's going to die, and he pats his body, and he's like, oh, I'm not dead. And all of a sudden, he hears a voice come booming out saying, Who dares approach my kingdom. And he goes, It's I, Phaethon. I believe you are Helios, and you are my father. And all of a sudden, the light disappears. Phaethon clears his eyes and blinks a couple times, and there, sitting in a gigantic golden throne, is Helios himself. Helios is taking off his crown and putting it behind him into a little case. And Helios goes, Boy, come forward. And Phaethon walks forward. He just goes, who did you say you were? He goes, my name is Phaethon, son of Helios and Phaethon's mom. And Phaethon's mom, that's my mom, she told me that you were my father. Is it true? And Helios looks down and goes, it is true. Phaethon, I am your father. And he reaches out <laughs> and, and Phaethon gets all excited. He's like, yay! He does a little heel click. Uh, he was like, all right. And he goes, listen, buddy, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I've not been around for 16 years. Um, I should have been. Uh, I have a job. I travel a lot for it. Um, but I'd like to make it up to you. And Faith goes, yeah, I bet you would. He goes, uh, how about this, buddy? Um, 
I'm going to give you a wish. Anything you want. You name it, and it'll come true. And I will do it for you. No, even better. I swear on the river Styx, if it is within my power to do it, I will grant you whatever you want. How does that make up for 16 years of not being there? And Phaedon's like, woo high five. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. High five. He's all excited because Helios has a giant hand and he has a little tiny oh, hand. Oh, so. okay, okay. He goes, all right. He goes, well, what is it you would like? And Phaedon thinks, he goes, mm, well, I'm 16 and I'm a guy and my dad has the most awesome job in the world and I want to taunt these jerks at school. Uh, obviously, there's only one thing I'm going to want to do. And what is the one thing he's going to want to do? Show his dad. He wants to drive the sun chariot. He goes, Dad, I want to drive your car. And he goes, eh, that's not such a good idea. And he goes, what? He goes, because you don't want to drive my car. And he goes, I do want to drive your car. And he goes, no, you don't, because it's going to kill you. And he goes, what? And he goes, listen. I'm a god, you're only half a god, and it took me years of training to be able to do this because there's monsters up there, and the horses are humongous, and you have to be able to control them, and it's not an easy thing to do. And Phaedon goes, blah, 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 keys. And he goes, no, you don't understand. You're going to end up dying, and it's going to lead to your death. You don't want to do it. Phaedon goes, blah, 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 keys. And he goes, ah! And so Helios tries to argue with him, and he convinces him it's a bad idea. And every time, Faith then goes, and then, and then, and then, promise on sticks. And he goes, ah! So eventually, the alarm starts going off. Daylight, daylight, time to start, time to start, because that's what his alarm says. Yeah. And he goes, all right, buddy, I have to take off. We'll talk about this later. And Faith then goes, you mean I have to take off, and we'll talk about it later. So he goes over and grabs the keys out of Helios' hands. He's like, I'll see you later, Pops. And goes running out to the garage where the giant chariot is. And there's humongous horses out there and this giant chariot with burning wheels. And he goes scampering up the side to get into it. And Helios goes, listen, I can't stop you. Why can't you not stop him? This is, this is war on the river sticks. He's like, I can't stop you, but I'm going to tell you it's a horrible idea. It's going to lead to your death. At the very least, listen to this warning. Here's what you need to un... And before he can finish... Faith and goes, Psh, woo! And shoots off into the sky. He just goes, ah, okie dokie. And Faith and goes up into the sky, burning horse feet going everywhere, and fire coming off the back of it. Faith then is screaming down there. He's like, woohoo! He's like, take that, people! I'm so much better than you! And everything goes wonderfully. He's all excited. Until a giant crab jumps out from behind the cloud. Because I'm not sure what's in the sky. And the crab goes, Whatever crap. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Phaethon freaks out and screams, eee! and then ducks down inside of the little chariot. Let's go of the reins, covers his eyes, and just screams. The horses go nuts because there's no one grabbing onto the reins, no one controlling them, and they want to get away from the killer as fast as they can. So they go the opposite direction of the crab. And the crab is in the sky, so they go down. straight down to the earth. And he just goes, ah, the whole time. And the horses end up hitting the ground in Africa. And when they hit the ground in Africa, with such an impact, oh. it burns everything around that area. Not only does it burn the ground in that area, it burns all the people in that area and turns the color of their skin darker. And the farther you are away from it, the less it burns your skin. And then from there, it shoots back up into the air. Because what did it create in Africa? The desert. The Sahara Desert. It also explained how that people have different skin colors. And so it shoots back up into the air. Well, now the ground is burning out in Africa, and everything's burning down, and people are like, oh, my skin is not the same color. And all of a sudden, Zeus looks out the window, and he goes, oh, snap, it's happening. Because what does he think is going to be ready to happen? Oh, the world's going to burn. Everything's going to end in fire because the prophecy. And Zeus decides to solve this problem in classic Zeus fashion. And yeah. how is Zeus going to solve the problem? Kill him. Oh, He's just going to go ahead and kill him. So he reaches down, pulls out his lightning bolt, tests the wind, and goes, and throws it out there. It goes whistling through the air. Faith and sees it coming and goes, yay, it's going to, no, it's going to, and it hits into the chariot. <clears throat> chariot goes in different directions. One burning little Faith and <laughs> hits a river that is in the Middle East that is named after him to this day that I have neglected to look up because it's in the story, but I keep forgetting to look. It's called mm, 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 River, uh, which is somewhere in the Middle East named after him. And 
They eventually have to rebuild the chariot and everything starts over. And this is how we get the Sahara Desert and how we get people with different skin colors. And anytime you don't listen to your parents, we find out what will happen to you. And what happens if you don't listen to your parents? You will die. So this was the story that parents would tell to their kids anytime they did not listen to them. The other issue that kids have with parents is not listening. being sassy. So let's deal with what happens when you're sassy to your parents. <laughs> this is a story about a girl by the name of Arachne. And Arachne was a young girl growing up in a village all by herself with no real parents or anyone around. But she self-taught herself how to weave. And weaving is, if you've ever been to um, Conner Prairie, they have these big looms and you put this string through it and you go... Shuk, shuk, and you make these things called tapestries. Oh. And a tapestry is a gigantic painting, but you don't use paint, you use string. And it's all about how you sew these strings together. And Arachne was incredible at weaving. She would, and also my Spider-Man thing kind of gives you an idea of being able to weave the strings together. That'd be like a tapestry over there. Arachne was so good at this that people would flock from everywhere to watch her. They would pour her loom out into the middle of the village, and people would crowd around her and just be chanting the whole time, Weave! 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 And they had Arachne jerseys on and stuff like that. And it was great, and they just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And, they, and there we'll see. Tomorrow we'll figure out the rest of what happens with Arachne, and if you have a quiz, and... Those of you going to the talent show, nah, you're in for a treat. <laughs>